Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown. Welcome social media family to another interview. This is episode four, right? Okay, right, four. This is episode four. And mm. um, on the last episode, we were talking about the emergence of 80s dancehall yeah. music. Yeah. The producers that were making headway from Jamaica yeah. and influencing the sound system culture in the UK mm. as well. And um, DJ Warman Easy's um, introduction to um, so, Stone Love. Yeah. Stone Love. But, and, but, before, but, Stone, but before Stone mm. Love, now if I say... Bang 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 did line did line did line did line bang 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 did line did line bang 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 did line did line did line did line did I never had so much bongs come out of one map than ranking Joe on race symbolic. Who was the selector again? Oh, was it was it Just Screw? Yes, Just Screw, Just Screw, yeah, Just Screw, Just Screw. And was it Just Screw that produced? I might be wrong. I might be throwing a wild card out there. Was it the album? No, no, no. There was, there was, there was a, there was a big, big tune that he produced, I think, and it was under Miss Sensi, Barrington Lee. Barrington Lee. Did he produce that tune? No, I don't think that was the same. Just so, Spoon. so how, so how come, how come I see Just Screw's name on that label? I said that. Mm, I'm not sure about that one. But... Answers on a postcard. Somebody yeah. put in the comment section below if I'm wrong, because I'm sure under Miss Sensi, Just Screw had something to do with that, and it must. And, and I want to know if it's the same Just Screw. That was a selector for race yeah. symbolic. So if you know, please leave a comment underneath in the description box or the comment section below, rather. And when when, when race symbolic were touring England at the time, they were using a sound. The sound that they toured on was a sound from Birmingham called Jungle Man. And when they turned on their bass line, you felt it. And at that time as well, when they were touring, they had an album out. Ranking Joe had an album just come out called Saturday Night Jamboree. That is a classic. Wayne Jarrett. Yeah. Saturday night jam. And it had um, Hodem I Go Cross River Jard and Barrington Levy. So some of the tracks was off a of Barrington Levy album and you'd and they'd be the same track. I'm telling you. <laughs> Ranking Joe. You. Ranking Joe. And I see that man with my own eyes. You know, oh it was amazing. It was amazing. And I mean, as a youth then I, I actually arrive at the dance. I arrived at the dance and I didn't have no money to get in. I just had to be, even if I had to stand up outside all night <laughs> and the man at the gate said, what up, you? You know, come in. Come in, you, man. And he let me in, you know what I mean? And I, I, I'll never forget that. That's The man doesn't know how I really appreciated that, you know. I get to see the, the great ranking is, Joe. That is livication, you know, you yeah. know what I mean, to, to the craft. Yeah, we oh. used to sneak in the back of some dance as well. You know, man, going and pay to go in and open up the window so you could climb through. <laughs> we had to get in there because we needed to know what's going on with this music. Right. You know? So yeah, Ranking Joe, Ray Symbolic, that was another historical moment in my musical career anyway, you know. And mm. Ranking Joe's still touring. Yes, With still. Lone Ranger and people like that. The last, the last time I saw Ranking Joe was in, was in San Diego. Yeah. So in San Diego yeah. with, um, with Mad Professor. And my professor's son. You see, another thing like that, at that time as well, a lot of the artists them used to come from Jamaica to the UK yeah. first. Mm -hmm. But now they hardly come here. They go, mo I mean, you do get artists coming here still, like Freddie McGregor, etc. But a lot of them are going to America now. They moved to America to live there as well because there's 52 states mm -hmm. to travel. But we did have our own industry at the time, though, in the UK. Don't get me <laughs> sorry started well, that, it was an industry then <laughs> it was an industry then because you had black echoes chart you know you had a lot of dances going on lovers rock was was emerging big in the late 80s early 90s <laughs> but you've already covered that topic anyway so <laughs> okay right okay yeah so um ray symbolic and ranking joe yeah yeah they, they, yeah that, that was a tour de force, man. Mm. I mean, just 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 in terms of, just in terms of like the the, the style of toasting back yeah. then in the day. Do you know what I mean? It was like there was just something about ranking joy. I mean, you, you you also had um, Gemini from Jamaica that came here as well with um, Welton Irie. Welton Irie, yeah, and Squidly, which mm -hmm. is um, Peter Peter Metro's Peter brother. Peter Metro, yeah, yeah. And, but, then you had, and then Metro Media more or less followed as well. Yeah, Metro Media followed after that as well. Yeah, and then there was, those sounds were clashing with the London sounds at the time, which would be Saxon Unity. This is a, this is late eighties too. Yeah, right? late eighties, mm -hmm. and all these guys, General Levy and all, they were all young guys then, and you know. You had Saxon with Pip Irie and, and Levi. They were all young on the thing, but they were clashing with these big, big sounds from Jamaica and making a name for themselves as well. I, I have to say this on record, and I've always said this. I've always said this, and I'll, I will continue to say this. Saxon sound, mm. to me, 
was the Motown of sound systems. There was not any other sound that spawned so many, many so many artists. So many bona fide artists. Maxi Priest. Maxi. Tipper Irish. Tipper. Kerner, Kerner, Smiley Culture. Smiley Culture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For Ro start. Roger Robin. Roger Robin, yeah. Yeah, a artists. I mean, I even had a stint recording for yeah. them as well, but... You know what I mean? That, that was way after yeah. the event. But, uh, but that was another thing as well, as you mentioned, that sound system of producing artists. I mean, Fat Man Sound originally had Roy Rankin and Raymond Naptali, who yeah. put out music as well, you know. And then you had, um, you had um, Unity Sound, who bring Richie Davies, the Ragga Twins, Lloyd Brown, you know. And you had plenty of other sound. You had Coxon, who bring, um, Coxon Sound, who bring um, um, Bikey, Bikey, Bikey Dread. Bikey, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and other people as well. So yeah, Ribs was the Ribs was the first, the first producer yeah. to record my first bona fide solo singles. Yeah. He was the first person to record me. And another thing about dance as well at that time, when a sound's coming to play, artists, even if it's just a sound system without artists, when when they hear a sound up here, you know, dance full up before mm. sound reach. Yeah before sound reached the string up. That's how popular these things were, you know? Yeah. People were able to meet each other on a regular basis. Now you only see people if it's a funeral or something like yeah. that, you know? It's a yeah. sad thing. But yeah. yeah, back to the 80s and, and, the, and the 90s, yeah, as we said, we moved on from Ray Symbolic and you had sound like Saxon, Unity, Jemmy Magic, you know, all those sounds that we're, were playing against and with sounds from Jamaica. So which, so which, which was the most memorable sound clash? For you, in in the well, my most memorable sound clash was in a place called Slough. You had you had Kilimanjaro, mm -hmm. Saxon, mm -hmm. Unity. Mm -hmm. I think it was them three sounds. Wow. Yeah. And and Kilimanjaro was using our sound from Luton called Freedom as their touring sound. Right. What they toured with because mm -hmm. the, the sound the sound system itself was known for their equipment quality and stuff. Right. And I remember Brigadier Jerry Brigadier Jerry. Brigadier Jerry came to Luton as well with Colonel Lines and did some live shows mm -hmm. in the late 80s as well. That was one of my first experiences of hearing people like that, you know, that was... Pain! Boom, 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 Yeah, Brigadier, the great Brigadier Jerry, who's going to be touring very soon with Ailawi. All around, uh, all around America. He just announced it on, um, on, on social wow. media. Yeah. And his sister, Sister, sister Nancy. Sister Nancy's still doing tours. Doing bam, shows well. bam. What the bam, bam. Yeah. Bam, bam, <laughs> bilang, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah. A lot of these artists from that period are still touring all around the world. Japan, you know, Canada, all over Far East. So even though you don't hear them on record, they're still touring. They're still working. Yeah. They're yeah. still working. They're you still know. working. And, 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 and me now as a... As a, as a John Public coming up in the music and to become a radio man and a selector. I get to meet these people mm -hmm. and and interview them as yourself. You know, interview my, my idols. It's it's great. So is it so it's in, it's interesting to to make a segue now from from sound systems to radio to radio yeah. and what we call then pirate radio. So if I'm calling your station a pirate radio station in 2017, I apologize. I know, yeah, it's a, but it was known as that because even Shabba made a tune, Pirate Anthem which became a hit. Which was the first song that Kiss played mm. when Kiss was made legal. Yeah. De ma Carlos Pirate, De ma Carlos Illegal Broadcasters. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. because we play what the people mm. want. Load them! You know, funnily enough, that's the first, one of the first tunes I played when I ended up on the BBC as well. Sick. Just to make a point, coming from there. And that says a lot. Yeah. That's, that says a lot. It's like, it's... It's one of those tunes that was synonymous with the time, like with Bob Marley's punky reggae party. Mm. That was synonymous with the whole punk movement and the reggae movement moving side by side, you know, fighting against what we was fighting against, yeah. racism and injustice and things like that. So with Home T4, Home T Cocker T and Shabaranks mm. singing the Pirates anthem, yeah. Remember, because they were singing about they were singing about the we, UK's yeah, reality. culture, yeah, reality, the UK's music culture, yeah. what we was being fed with, yeah, and what we was fighting against, yeah. you know, because we had the DTI, Department of Trade and Industry, more or less chopping down antennas all over yeah. the place and raiding the buildings, and raiding the buildings, all the equipment, you know, everything. They took everything, flyers, 
tips. Yeah, everything. Whatever you whatever you had in the building that helped basically run the station was Go getting on. confiscated. Yeah. So that so people was basically standing to lose a, a whole heap of equipment you worth lose, thousands you lose, and thousands. You lose your freedom as well if they caught yeah. you. You're going to jail. Yeah. You know? Just in yeah. order for you mm. to listen to the music that the BBC don't play. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But, so But yeah. moving from from you know sound system into radio now, as I said earlier on, even though I wasn't involved in a sound, I used to go out and buy music what I was hearing in London, places like, you know, Dob Vendor, Regal Records. Um, there was a sh M D which used to be in Hackney. Yes. I used to go there as well. And um, yeah, so we had a, a nice collection of music. And then the Pirate Radio started in Luton in 1987, a, a station called Network FM. Mm. And um, they used to broadcast from somebody else. <laughs> but, somebody else. Yeah. Somebody had. And, I, and then I used to listen to that and I think, you know what, I'd love to do this, but, you know, I'll wait till somebody... You didn't know how to how to go about getting involved in it. And then they announced that they were looking for people to play on the radio. And then somebody suggested to them that they know somebody who, um, who's got a good collection of reggae music. And they were looking for a revival as well, which is what I specialised in when I first started on the radio. And um, so they invited me to come down and play some music on the radio to see how I... How I like a demo then, a yeah. live demo. Yeah. And I remember putting the record on my hand shaking and I'm thinking, why am my hand shaking and <laughs> nobody can't see me? <laughs> you know what I mean? We talked about and then I got over that quickly and then they decided we had to have a name. You had to have some sort of name on the road. You couldn't have Lloyd Mullings. You know, that's not going to work. So the I said, what about, well, a lot of people that were doing live but shows. But not, not wrong with the name Mullins, you know, because, they, you know, there's, 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 some, there's some DJs across, you know, across the oceans. With Canada, Tanya Mullins. Tanya and Mullins, Carrie and Mullins and Carrie Mullins. Big up, big up Tanya Mullins and Carrie Mullins, two big artists and radio Are you related to them? Yeah, they're cousins, you know, distant cousins and stuff. So, so you up, wait for one Mullins and three come up. at once. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, so I went on there, did that, and then, and, you had to start off late at night as well. That was another thing. They won't put you in at the peak hours. You had to start off late at night. And I used to come on like midnight till, till two in the morning. And at that time, I was working at Vauxhall as well. Right. And then I realised that people from Vauxhall were listening to me. They could phone in and make requests. Mm. And I used to get really popular on that time there. So they brought me on an on a, on a earlier time from eight till ten. And that's when I started to get jingles and stuff from people like Tipper Irie. And what was the first jingle you got? First jingle I got was Tipper Irie. Yip, 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 hooray, one man is here to stay on the radio today. Hey, hey. That was actually a track off one of his albums. His yes. One, a yeah. black and white cover. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, two sides of Tipper Irie. Yes, yes. Yeah, and that was my first radio jingle. See. And we started to make them up ourselves as well, you know, in the studio. And yeah, it was all fun, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But I'd always treasure that first jingle from Tip Irie, you know, because it was a big name. Yes. And man, I said, oh, you get that jingle, you can get me. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, we all helped each other out sort of as well. See, you know? see. So that was my first introduction into radio on um, Network FM. Big up anybody who was on Network and FM. And when, OK, just to clarify, when did you start working at Network FM? 1987. And when did you cease working there? When did your tenure end? I worked there for about two years and then the name changed from Network FM to LUR, which it still is now, Luton Urban Radio. Okay. And and do, do they play, I mean, is the quote of music is the same or has it changed? The quote of the music at the time, you had a soul show followed by a reggae show, followed by a hip hop show and then a talk show and then a gospel show. So there was all different and a talk show, so it was all different. Right. Whereas now, they play anything and anything on any show now, really. No disrespect to them, they still have some sort of organisation, yeah. but not as good as it was before, because with the media now, anybody can become a DJ without earning their stripes, then, as to say. Mm. you know. And the quality is not that great as before, because you had to do a demo, which was good. Right. You know, but yeah, that was an enjoyable time. Network FM. There was quite a few other stations that popped up as well. And there was another one called People's FM, mm. which mainly played roots music. Burning Spear. If you want to hear Burning Spear and all those Israel Vibration, mm -hmm. those type of roots music, you'd hear that on People's FM. That bit, they, they would come on in the evening, about eight o'clock till two two o'clock in the morning, right. and they'd lock off. Whereas Network FM, we'd come on seven o'clock in the evening, and then when we'd done at two o'clock, Music playing continues through the night. Oh, okay. You know? So, yeah, that was an enjoyable period. And then from there, I went to another station called Jive FM, which mm. was more, they were more like a commercial station. Mm. And um, 
they were more pop based and more more R and B, more R and B and soul. Mm. But then they were looking for a few ra um, radio DJs. So there was me, Daddy D. I don't know if you heard of Daddy D. He used to be with a sound called Tippertone from Wembley, oh, yeah. which was Trevor T sound. Yeah. Which is where Robert Ranks came from and General Levy, mm -hmm. and you had um, a selector like um, Juki Jam, mm -hmm. and then at that time Traffic Jam Radio was going on in Harsden, and I used to listen to them with Bushman. <laughs> right. So you know the, the radio thing was big at that time. Yeah. You know? yeah. So even though we're doing it ourselves, we're still travelling into London to buy food, West Indian shop, either the music. Bushman on the radio and yeah. whoever. It was all good. So everything was interlinking. Interlinking. As I explained in a video of mine about the industry, interlinking. interlinking yeah, important. Right. So we're going to close off this episode. Yeah. And the next episode we're going to go into is where he was working for the BBC, my dear chap. Mm. The, 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 British, the British Broadcasting Corporation, don't you know? <laughs> what, what, old chap? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about that at length because. Mm. I think that's where a lot of people know you from, okay? Okay. So with that, yeah. stay tuned. Stay tuned.